So in terms of ingredients, we have 500 grams of strong white bread flour. In this instance, it is Bob's Red Mill Artisan Bread Flour. I have seven grams of instant yeast. You could use 12 grams of fresh yeast. I do not know what that converts to in terms of active dried yeast. 10 grams of salt and 25 grams of oil. In this instance, I'm using canola, but you could use melted butter or soft butter. You could use olive oil, whatever your preferred type of fat is. In the mixer bowl, we have already measured out 350 grams of water. So we are ready to mix. <laughs> And with slightly wet hands, I'm just going to gather up the rest of the bits from the bowl. And there we have a very soft, silky uh, dough. This is around 70% hydration at 350 grams of water and 500 grams of flour, but we also added 25 grams of oil if you remember i'm not sure if oil's counted in hydration but it is liquid so my fingers are getting a bit dry and sticky so we will put the dough in the bowl for proofing you could equally leave it in the uh, the mixer bowl i prefer um, this smaller bowl so that i can use the mixer for other tasks while it's proving I'm going to cover and we're going to leave that for around an hour and then we'll come back and see what the uh, the dough looks like after the first rise and so we're back after only 45 minutes because of the temperature of my kitchen which is hovering just above 26 degrees celsius um, we can see that this dough has already significantly increased in size. It's very difficult to judge a, what the recipe books call a doubling in size, <clears throat> but certainly you can see that this is appreciably bigger. If you wanted to do some tests in terms of um, gauging uh, double the size, you could use a cylindrical container um, and measure how far up the dough is and then wait till it doubles in height. Um, or a straight-sided pan you could use for similar. The next step of course is to take this out of the bowl and we're going to shape it uh, ready for the second rise before baking. You have choices at this point. You could cut this up into pieces, maybe 8, 10 or 12 small pieces and turn them into soft bread rolls. Um, you could use um, a bread pan. We have this one which is uh, a one pound loaf tin but today I think I'm going to go with a bloomer style and for that I've prepared a baking sheet. And this baking sheet has this uh, silicon baking parchment on it because it's reusable. This has been with me for a very long time already and is probably more eco-friendly than using uh, disposable baking parchment. So to make this happen <clears throat> we're going to get a light dusting of flour on the work surface, removing any crumbs and a little bit on the top of the dough. You see, there's not a huge amount of flour here, just a little bit of dust, little light dust so that it doesn't stick, a little bit of dust on the fingers, and there we go. That releases from the oiled bowl quite easily. 
just making sure that none of it is sticking to the work surface we're just going to stretch it out a little bit and then using my knuckles I'm just going to knock this back to get rid of any of those big pockets of air out because we want a fairly consistent sandwich bread crumb this isn't an artisanal sourdough loaf so there is no need to uh, preserve those big bubbles which I don't like anyway because the filling of your sandwich drips through them on an artisan loaf I guess it's okay for dipping in soup or similar but for this sandwich bread we want to get rid of those big air pockets as far as possible and so because we're going to be making a uh, bloomer style loaf today uh, we're going to roll this uh, roll this dough as follows making sure we're not sticking and it is a little bit sticky we fold it over and fold it over again and then it's just a matter of taking the top end and rolling it down and as you can see it gets bigger in the middle as we add more dough if need be we could bring those ends in a little bit there we have a fairly fat sausage and a little bit more flour is going to help me just roll that out a little bit bringing the ends down in size aiming towards that classic bloomer shape I'm not going to go too sharp on the ends that would take me into uh, battard territory but you see oh there you go you see the seam has pretty much incorporated into the rest of the dough Oops, still sticking a little bit so let me get this roll so that it's not sticking there we go and if you wanted to you could pinch the ends to give a nice neat finish well it's a shape Of course with the bloomer it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect <clears throat> you'll find that that smooths out and uh, you'll find that that smooths out and looks far better than it currently does once it's had a chance to rise a little bit further so a little dusting of flour on top to prevent sticking and we will leave this to, for its second rise, covered in a tea towel. And based on the first rise, uh, I think 30 minutes might make this uh, blow up a little bit too much. We'll probably come back in 20 and see how it looks. Hmm. See you soon. So we're back after only 25 minutes. Let's have a look at what we got. Well, there we have um, a generally large splodgy blooper. It's feeling marshmallowy. That's good. And now we want to make sure that this uh, second rise is at the right point for baking. And we're going to do that with a poke test. We're going to poke a finger in. If we poke a finger in and it stays, uh, the dimple stays all the way in then we can expect that it's slightly overproved because it's lost its bounce. If we poke a finger in and that dimple comes all the way out very quickly, we can suppose that it's underproved because it's bouncing too much. So what we're looking for is to poke a finger in and for that dimple to slowly return to not quite all the way out. So we have a small dimple still remaining uh, and that should give us a good indication of where the proofing is at. So let's give that a go. We poke in and that's looking good we're seeing the hole fill up it's not coming all the way out so 
maybe uh, it's staying in a little bit too much, more than I would like, so perhaps this has had five minutes too long on its second rise. Nevertheless, that'll bake out, no problem with that. Um, and for now, we're gonna score the top of the loaf and put it in the oven. We're going to bake this, I think, for around 30 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius, uh, and then we'll check on it and see how it looks. And we're back. So <laughs> this bread is not going to win any prizes for being the prettiest, uh, but it's certainly uh, doing the job. You see here not much expansion along the scoring so I could have done a lot better job with the scoring there <clears throat> and you'll see that actually it's burst along the uh, side of the loaf on one side and given it a bit of a an uneven shape we knock it it sounds hollow which would indicate that it's done but to check I can use a thermometer and there we go, averaging around 97 and a half degrees. Anything above 95 degrees is cooked. You're aiming for 95 to 100 degrees Celsius. Um, and that looks good. So we will set that down on a cooling tray. So we set that down on a cooling tray uh, and we'll give it at least 45 minutes to an hour to cool so that the moisture inside that loaf <clears throat> is able to uh, evaporate off and help the dough to set on the inside. If you cut into that too early, it's going to get gummy. So don't be tempted to go at it too soon. Uh, one thing I didn't mention during the baking process, you always have an option to add a, a heavy pan into the bottom of the oven and fill it with a cup of boiling water as you close the oven door. This will generate steam within the oven and that'll give you a much crispier crust. Now, I added oil to this with the expectation of a nice soft loaf and I'm looking for a softer crust on this bread when we come to eat it. So, during the cooling process, I'm gonna cover it again with our tea towel and that'll help retain that moisture inside and keep the crust nice and soft. That is it for Twisty Bakes and the basic white bread uh, with the Ankarsra mixer. Let me know how you got on uh, and what your techniques are for using the Ankarsra when you're baking your bread. See you next time.